This is a magnificent wedding kimono, which is traditionally used, uh, worn in Japan during the wedding ceremonies. The wedding kimono usually has uh, two things on, and that is the herons, which are, uh, uh, which are on here, and all hand-woven with gold and with white silk, which are really, really very, very beautiful, and flowers. The flowers usually used are cherry blossom or chrysanthemums or irises. So depending on which mon or a house you belong to, there will be different flowers on the wedding kimono. It is a magnificent object which can be worth up to 100,000 US dollars or more because it is all hand, hand worked and handmade and very, very heavy. So the principal people in it cannot wear it for a very long time because if a girl wears it, it's almost 20 pounds in weight. So it is very difficult. collected uh, ancient uh, wedding kimonos for, for many years, and some of them are very beautiful indeed. This would have been a kimono worn by a very wealthy member of a very wealthy family for her wedding. And this is a different one to the, from the first one I have shown, but still it has the beautiful silk heron on it and the chrysanthemum, which are the royal flower of Japan or the flower of Japan. The 16-point chrysanthemum is, is, the, is the chrysanthemum of Japan. But it, the whole, the whole um, gown is made out of gold and silk, and it's all handmade. It is a very beautiful object. And there, and there is a cute little story that I often tell about uh, when I used to trade with Japan in 1970s, I used to go to Osaka uh, to Kanibo textile mills because they made some fabrics to my design. And one day, a gentleman there came to collect me at the hotel, and I asked him, is he married? And he said, yes, he is. I said, do you have any children? And he said, unluckily, I have three daughters. And I said, why unluckily? And he said, because I have to save up for their wedding. And he told me at that time that to buy a beautiful wedding kimono for one of his daughters is 100,000 US dollars. So having three of them, it would bankrupt him for life to buy three wedding kimonos for three girls. So it's a quite, a, this is a true story, but it's, it, is, it is true. And they are very beautiful, but very expensive. And usually not worn twice. They are usually just worn once and, and used as heirlooms to pass on to their daughters and their granddaughters. They are not actually recycled like our wedding dresses sometimes are recycled in the West. This also is a wedding kimono, although this time it's not traditional red. It's cream and pink. But someone who really loves birds very much, although the lining of it is in red silk. And so the girl that wore this was from a very much more noble family, I would think, who refused to have uh, too much uh, color on her gown because she was influenced by the Western influence already. And this kimono would have been worn around 1950, year 1950 for a wedding. It's a little different from the others, but also it is very, very beautiful and has uh, silver threads embroidered with pure silk. And it has lots of herons, symbols of longevity, good health and wealth. And it is very, very beautiful. It has gorgeous sleeves and is still very heavy and has a beautiful red silk lining. So a girl that would have worn that would have looked quite stunning for her wedding day.
By the way, they always, they always put their kimonos from left to the right. So she would wear it from left side to the right side like that with her obi on top because they believe the only time that, that is left side is the hot side. The only time that they cross it right from the left when they are in their coffin, when they are dead. So Japanese people always wear their kimonos from the left to right. This is a magnificent obi in gold and silk. For, to be worn for a very, very special occasion. Some of the big, largest obis are up to 20 feet long, and they are woven on a special narrow small loom, so they only take this design. And the most expensive ones are double-sided, and very, they can be very heavy, and they are collected and changed each time a very important person goes for a date of any sort, for a meeting of any sort. This is a green one, which is very, very unusual. Most of them are black or red. I will show you a very beautiful black one dating from very early last century. This is a special black obi done by, with a special design, with a special craftsman, and worn for evenings because it is shaded to go with the evening things and evening uh, purses. The lady would usually wear a little pouch purse made out of similar or same silk as she wears her obi. And it's interesting that even today, when young girls have their graduation or weddings, or girls from fi fine family, or women from fine families, or rich women, they always go to dinners and meetings dressed in their kimonos rather than in Western t type gowns. This is an obi which would usually be worn by a geisha or a very young girl and it's an obi which is worn in spring and for afternoon occasions because, or summertime because it has a sign in colors of the sun and spring and summer but it still has the 16 petal chrysanthemum which is very much a, a part of Japan and Japanese history. It is very beautiful. The, 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 the threads here are uh, red silk, white silk, and gold threads. I actually watched one of these obis being embroidered by embroideress in one of the museums in Tokyo, and it was really done, all this embroidery is really done by needle, with needlework, fine needlework, and she does it all with needlework quite, quite, quite slowly. So, um, um, we think that is woven, but it is not. It is actually done on top of the material itself with the needlepoint work.